Hi all, it's PJ with Montevilla Sewing Centers. This section is on the cutaway stabilizers. The link to the stabilizer cheat sheet is in the video description below. Cutaway stabilizers are generally used on non-stable fabrics and the most common of these would be knit, a t-shirt knit, a sweatshirt knit, fleece as in polar fleece or sweatshirt fleece but then there's also some things that are not knits that you would want to use a cutaway on loose woven fabrics like a flannel possibly a terry cloth towel basically anything that is not stable this shows a 10 times magnification of the back side of a piece of denim you can see the diagonal ribs that's one of the reasons that twill weaves have a bit of give to them. It also makes them a not stable fabric. So cutaways, perfect for denim. This is page two, the cutaways. In my mind, there are two types of cutaways. There are your non-wovens, and then there is the mesh type. So I'm gonna talk about the non-wovens first. And again, the way this sheet is set up, this is the Floriani and this is the OESD. And it's got approximate hoop sizes, approximate thread counts, and then again, the types of fabrics are listed over on this side. Most cutaways, you'll have just your basic cutaway. There'll be a fusible option usually, and then a tacky option. Here are a couple of examples. This particular one, actually I used a cutaway on this, but this is just a standard quilt weight cotton. So just because you've got a cotton doesn't mean you can't use cutaway. This would come in handy if you were not going to remove the stabilizer at all. Say you were going to use this as like a pillow and you wanted your fabric to have a little more oomph to it. You could do it like this and just leave the cutaway completely intact. This is the more common use of a cutaway. This is a sweater knit that is really pretty stretchy. So this is the obvious candidate for a cutaway stabilizer. And on this, so here's this, and you can actually see that you can see some of the white showing through on the red. When I stitched this, I didn't use a topper. And basically the thread is kind of falling into the knit. On this, because the woven is a much harder surface to begin with, same exact design, same thread, same everything. I stitched one after the other, but here you're not seeing near as much show through, mainly because the base fabric itself was much more stable to begin with. You can also see that right here, it moved a little bit even with the stabilizer. I may not have actually basted that in place to start with. This is where uh, using a fusible or a water activated would help because you would attach your, your fabric would be more attached to your stabilizer while you were stitching. On this one, I didn't have that problem mainly because the fabric itself was more stable to begin with. So this is, where that became unregistered, that is kind of the perfect example of why you would want to use either a temporary spray adhesive or a fusible or a tacky stabilizer to connect your fabric and your stabilizer together. All right, so that is just a rundown on just a standard cutaway stabilizer. As a general rule, when you get done with this, you would trim away your stabilizer and you want to leave a about an eighth to a quarter of an inch of stabilizer around where you're trimming. As you launder this, the embroidery and the garment are gonna move 
and you don't want your stabilizer to suck in underneath your stitches if that happens what will on the front side it'll kind of cave in and you'll have a dent at the edge of your embroidery so you always want to leave a little bit of a border on your cutaway stabilizer so here's another little tip on uh, with your stabilizers with your cutaway stabilizers if you have a design that's like this that has multiple sections of embroidery and you're and the fabric is bunching up in between the embroideries the embroidery is not bunching but the fabric in between is just clip in between those to release the stabilizer so that the embroidery and stabilizer and the fabric can kind of move independently that will help if you just cut those apart this section covers the mesh type cutaway stabilizers here's another example so this is flannel and again flannel not overly stable because it's usually pretty loosely woven I'm not sure how well this shows up on the camera there we go see how this is all wrinkly this design even with a stabilizer is really too heavy for a flannel but if you've got a kid or a grandkid that absolutely positively has to have that design on their jammies, what are you going to do? So here is basically that same design. It's, yes, a different color, but same design. Same flannel. But what I've done here is I've used two layers of the no-show mesh, and I used fusible. So generally speaking, if you fuse or tack the stabilizer to your fabric, it will hold it will tend to hold up more stitches than the non-fusible or non-tacky version because you're kind of la you're temporarily laminating your stabilizer to your fabric and that lamination is adding more structural stability as you're stitching what i've done on this sample is i've used two layers of the mesh type stabilizer and I've done one in what I call the north, south, east, and west. And then I've done one at a 45 degree angle to that. The poly mesh or the no-show mesh has kind of a, um, a grid stamped into it when they manufacture it. And that grid is actually going the north, south, east, and west, which does give it a little bit of a bias. Not a lot just a little bit so if you rotate if you layer in one upright and one at the 45 you're making sure that you're going to get even stabilization all the way around and you can see it's been trimmed close here so once you would do all of your sections and then just trim all this away and then you can either just carefully trim around here or you can use a stencil cutter or a wood burning tool and just carefully trim that out and then you have a nice border design you can also make patches this way you can just hoop up multiple layers i usually like to use about three layers of the no-show or the poly mesh and then you can stitch your patch trim really close and i just usually use a lighter around the edge and just kind of seal that edge up and it works really well for patches this is another really good use for the no-show or mesh type cutaway stabilizers uh, for doing quilt blocks so i've got just a quilt white cotton a warm and natural batting and then a no-show mesh or poly mesh stabilizer the quilter select product line also has a cutaway stabilizer which is mesh which is much much lighter which is really intended for doing things exactly like this where you would want to support uh, the stitches and it's going to be left in when everything is said and done this would be part of the quilt and it would stay there but the quilter select is much lighter than this but it still holds up fairly well to all of the stitches and it is designed 
to be used in quilt blocks. That's it for the cutaways.